In this one, we're setting up a rig that lets you switch between using forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. This video is targeted towards people who already know basic rigging concepts like how to set up an IK constraint. So if you're confused by anything I'm talking about, I have a playlist of other rigging videos that I'll link to in the description. Also, if you want the project file for this video, check out my Patreon, which is where I keep all of the project files, coupon codes for free Gumroad products, and a bunch of other files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. Link is in the description. The summary for this video is quick. First I'll talk about the easy IKFK switch, then I'll explain the concept behind the more complex version, then we'll build the rig and use drivers to control the switch. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so here we are in Blender, I'm using version 2.93 for this one. So first I'll add in an armature and we'll set up like a very simple chain. And I'm also going to turn on the names and the axes just temporarily. We can go into edit mode, and I'm just going to flip this around, rotate it 180 degrees like that. I'm just going to reset the roll to zero. For this, I'm just going to create three bones. This one's at the top. I'll extrude one down to about here, then one right there. So I want to explain like the easy method that I've used before to switch between IK and FK, and this just requires us to make an IK constraint. For the IK bone, I'll just extrude that down right here like that. This is going to be our IK controller, so you just want to hit Alt-P to clear the parent so it's not connected. And then we can go into pose mode. I'll rename this one IK.control because this is our IK controller. I just want to keep track of it. And we'll select this one, shift select that, shift I to add IK to the active bone. So now we have our IK chain right here. I could add a target for this so we can change which way this is pointing, but I'm not going to worry about it too much right here. So the easy way to switch between IK and FK is basically just selecting this bone right here that has the IK constraint on it and using this influence to turn the IK off. That's pretty much the concept behind the easy method. This is the method that I've used in my other rigging videos, and you can even use a bone to change this influence if you want with drivers. That's something that I will get into a little later. You can check the timestamps down below if you want to just skip ahead to that. This method is fine, but what's better about the complex method is that you can see the IK and the FK bones at the same time. And this is nice because when you switch from one to the other, you know exactly where your deforming bones are going to go. So here's an example I made earlier explaining the concept behind the more complex method. So basically we're going to have our deforming bones right here, some IK bones, and we're going to have some FK bones. And the main idea behind this is that we're going to put constraints on the deforming bones to either match the transformation of our FK bones or our IK bones like that. And then we can just switch between them. So we already have our IK bones right here, and I just want to select all of these and move them to the second layer right here with M. So now I'm just going to select these three right here. We don't need the controller bone to be duplicated. And I'll duplicate these with Shift D like that. And with those still selected, I'll move those to the first layer right here. We can check out the first layer. And I'll just rename these. I'm using an add-on called the Simple Renaming Panel. This is free, and you can download it if you want. Um, I have a link in the description. Or you can just go through and rename these individually, which is fine also. I'll rename these DEF, and that stands for deforming. And then I can duplicate these, right click to snap them back into place, and hit M and move those to layer 3. Let's go to layer 3 now. These are going to be our FK bones. I'll just rename them FK like that. So now we have three different sets of bones, the deforming, IK, and FK. And if you want, you can see all of them at the same time, but it gets a little messy, so that's why I put them on different layers. To make them easier to see, I'm just going to change their viewport display. And I'm also going to go through and change the color of each layer. So I just change the size of each set of bones, and I change the color also, just so we can tell them apart a little more easily. So these are the deforming bones, these are the IK bones, they're blue, and these are the FK bones, which are yellow. I'm just going to check out the FK and the deforming bones and make sure that they don't have any constraints. So this one is good, and the deforming bones, I just got to get rid of that IK constraint, because that's only for the IK chain. So my IK bones, I'll move over here, the FK bones... I'll move over here. We can see all of them at the same time. So basically what we're going to do is add some constraints to these deforming bones right here. Let's just select this first bone right here, go over to bone constraints. Once again, make sure you're in pose mode for all of this. And then we can just do copy transforms. Then we have to get our armature and we want this bone right here. 
So if you select it, you can see it's called IK001 right there. So that's what I'm looking for, IK001. There is a quicker way of doing this if you just want to use shortcuts. Select the IK bone first, and then the second one you select is the one that the constraint is going to be put on. So you select them in that order, then Control Shift C, and that will bring up this menu right here. And you can just choose Copy Transforms. So we'll do that for this last bone right here. Shift Control C, Copy Transforms. So next we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing except with the FK bones right here. So the deforming bones right here are going to have two separate sets of constraints. I'll just select this bone first, the FK, and then de the deforming. Shift Control C, Copy Transform, Copy Transform, and the last one right here. So now with this first deforming bone selected, if we turn the influence down on the second one, it'll go from matching the transformation of our FK bone to our IK bone, like that. We basically just have to do this for each separate constraint, which is kind of annoying. And there is a workaround that involves using drivers. So that's what we're going to do. Hit tab to go back into edit mode, select a bone at the top and extrude upward. And I want to disconnect this. Alt P, clear parent, just move it up a little, like right about there. This is going to be our switch. So I'll just rename this switch. And you can put this on whatever layer you want. Looks like it's on the third layer. But if you select it and hit M, you can shift select all of these and it will be on every layer like that. What we're going to do is make it so that when this goes up, this constraint turns on like that. And we're going to move this on the local Y axis right here. So select the deforming bone and come over to the constraints. And on the second influence, I'm going to right click and add a driver right here. I'm just going to delete this part of the expression. So it just says var, that's fine. Um, for the object, we need to select the armature first and then the bone which we named switch like that. And like I said, we want this to be the Y location of the local space. And now you can see when we move this up, it will turn on like that. I don't like how it moves around like this. So if you want this to be a little neater, you can add a constraint to it, a limit location constraint. I'll switch this to local space and turn all of these on, including effect transform. We only want this to move one meter uh, on the Y, so I'll just change this to 1. And now when we move it, it can only move in that direction like that. And now that we have this set up for that one bone, all we have to do is come over here and copy that driver, and we just have to paste it for the other deforming bones. So I'll just paste it like that, select this, paste it. And now we can easily switch from the FK to the IK bones. Now, when you're setting up your mesh, you just want to make sure that these bones in the middle are deforming your mesh and that the IK and FK bones are not. So that's pretty easy to do. You can select everything right here. If you come over to uh, bone properties, you can see we have deform. Uh, I'm just going to hold alt while I turn that off and that will make it so that all of these are non-deforming. And we can just select these, our deforming bones and hold alt and turn them on. So now these three in the middle are the only deforming bones. And if I reset all of these and create a mesh for them to actually be parented to, I'll just do that really quickly. With that selected, I'll just shift click our armature, control P with automatic weights like that. We'll add a subdivision surface to that too. Now when we're in pose mode, you can see that it's following the inverse kinematics. And when we move this bone, it'll match the FK instead. I have experimented with snapping the IK bones to the same position as the FK and the other way around also. I haven't found like a good solution for that. Basically what I've tried is putting copy transform constraints on each of the IK bones to copy the location of the FK. And, I've, and I did the same thing for the FK, except they're copying the IK. And obviously you don't want them to be on at the same time because then they'll just be trying to copy each other and um, Blender gets kind of confused and it doesn't work right. Um, but I was running into some issues with that where when I tr try to control this, there is like a little lag. It doesn't seem to want to, to follow correctly. I think it's because of the weird dependency loop. Uh, you can't really have the two sets of phones trying to copy each other. Um, even if they're both turned off, it still seems to struggle with it. 
And you can see right here, this is what it would look like, you know, snap the FK to the IK or snap the IK to the FK like that, but it's, it doesn't work perfectly. So I'm still looking for a good solution to that that doesn't require just making an add-on. So if anybody knows a good method of doing that, leave a comment below. All right, that's it for this one. Once again, you can get this project file on Patreon. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.